I really obviously. So I know um, you're really excited because we're done with glycolysis, so we're going to put this one away. Two things really quick before we leave. Hold on one second. Okay. Really, really quick, we're going to talk about uh, two different kinds of inhibition. We were talking about um, enzymatic reactions. Okay. So clear your brain of everything scary and crazy. This is really simple. Um, so enzymatic reactions. Remember when we were talking about um, cascades and about signals and why it's so important for us to be able to use cascades? What was the, the real bang for our buck that we got out of cascades? What was the thing that made them so worthwhile? What can you do with a cascade that you can't do from just transmitting a tiny signal from you know, like one little cell to another little cell over a small amount of space? What can you do with lots of space that you can't do with a small amount of space? Remember what I was talking about? This is all about space. Stereo, remember? Um, stereo chemistry is all about space. What you can do um, over a large amount of space, right? you can have a whole bunch of dominoes, and you can have just tons and tons and tons affecting more and more and more and more and more as you get further out, right? And so what you can do is you can amplify your signal. You can amplify a signal you're sending. You could um, amplify a drug reaction. So you could take a small amount of a drug, and then you could, you could cause these huge, amazing results with it, right? Um, you could amplify a sound signal. You could amplify tons of different things, all right? So the whole basic importance of cascade reactions, right? Um, so cascades, don't forget that. Is that you're going to amplify something, right? And she is going to have that on the exam. So um, what you're going to need to remember, basically, is that the reason that cascades are so useful for us over a large amount of distance over space is that you can you can basically amplify things and make them much much bigger than they originally were. So this comes in. Um, it's important basically because you're going to um, come into a point where you're using a tiny amount of energy, and you're getting a huge reaction. You're getting a huge result out of it, right? So enzymatic reaction that we were talking about before. Um, I spell amplify wrong. Ignore me. I apologize. Um, amplify. Crazy. Um, so basically, what you're going to do is you're going to have enzymatic reactions in the exam. She's going to give you two different questions, okay? So one of them is going to involve allosteric inhibition, and one of them is going to involve competitive inhibition. When you're stuck and you don't know what it is, just look at the word, right? We were going over this before. Allo means different, okay? Or other. And then steric is space, um, place, um, some sort of body, some sort of um, surface, okay? Steric, stereo in space. Remember exam one when we had that question that everyone got wrong, the protein question was really difficult? and it had to do with the folding of proteins in space, stereochemistry, and how those were interacting, that's what we're getting at here. Remember stereo, because it's happening um, like stereochemistry, like we were talking about in antimers, and it's stereo, it's actually in space, and it has to do with something and its orientation in space, all right? So allosteric, other space, other position, other, other port, okay? Think about it as a port. What happens with allosteric inhibition is you've got your substrate, right? And we're just going to pretend this is our substrate on our huge molecule or on our cell, right? Um, and you've got your substrate. And what is the substrate? The substrate, remember, is sort of like what we were calling it a keyhole, okay? And what was nice about the keyhole was there's this idea that you have keys walking around, right? And they can have the keyhole. And allosteric inhibition, what happens there, you have this other position other than the main area where you've got these main keys going on that have a certain shape that fit everything perfectly, sort of like Lego blocks, right? You can't use like those off-brand with Legos, right? You have to use a certain type of key to fit in there, right? Well, in another part, an allosteric area, right, a different part on these, these molecules that can be allosterically inhibited, you're going to have this port, this key, this other area, and if you um, introduce the correct, or the, the fitting particle in there, what happens is it's going to morph the entire molecule, it's going to morph the entire presentation of the cell um, or of this, the enzyme that's going on is going to morph the entire shape and space of it, right? So what you're basically going to have happen is you get the key, key goes in, right? And then the entire thing is going to morph into something other than that, so you can't get, so other guys can't get here. So think about a video game for allosteric inhibition. Think about a video game. You've got your blob, and you come along with your guy, and you you select them. So basically none of the other people you, you, um, you're going to have um, can get to your... Um, allosteric molecule because you've changed the entire shape of it and it's no longer permeable to the others, right? So that's what's going to happen with allosteric inhibition. What could you do to um, overcome allosteric inhibition? What could you What could you do to overcome it? 
Um, you could possibly block this port so nothing could get in there and turn it into a different shape, right? So think about transformers or something like that. This is the key sort of that, uh, this allosteric position, not the main one where the, you're going to have enzyme reaction, right? The other position, um, the allosteric one, you could block that area so nothing can get in there and change the shape, so that's one. Um, the other one we're going to talk about, okay? So that's that's the way you cross allosteric inhibition is maybe block the port, do something like that. Um, and there are two types, remember. There's the kind that you could change back into the right shape, or the shape that's useful for you, or there's the kind that's just stuck there forever, okay? So there's the stuck kind, and there's the kind that you can actually change back, right? So let's cross over to this other one. Competitive inhibition, think about the word, right? You're competing, and you've got this process that we want to happen um, for homeostasis, right? And what's homeostasis? Look at the word homeostasis, okay? is the state of being at home, and that's because your body has these processes and they can only work within a certain range. So your blood pressure, you want it to be you know, no more than 120 over 80, or your blood sugar, you don't want it to be below 90 or above 110, you know, depending on different factors, because your body works these metabolic processes, uh, they, they work within a certain range, and then below that or above that, they're not happy, they don't work as well. So your body's spending, spending so much energy just to make sure you're at homeostasis, right? Because you want to stay there, okay? So let's, we're done with our steak for right now. Let's look at the other kind of enzymatic reaction inhibition that she's going to have on the exam. Competitive inhibition. So think about that, competing. You've got your substrate, right? Okay? Now what's happening with your substrate, what's really strange here, is you've got, you've got your keyhole, okay? Your main one. You don't, this is not allosteric, it doesn't have different keyholes, okay? Um, you just got your main one that we're worried about right now. And you've got competitive inhibition. So you basically have substrate, but you don't have enough of it for all of the different keys that are going on. So you're competing, right, with all these other keys. So you definitely, definitely want to get yours and, you know, to the location that's locked. But it doesn't really matter because you're, you're competing with all these others. And you could get in there, and because it's not allosteric, it's not going to change shape afterwards and close. And still, just you know, for you, you have to worry about the fact that once you get there, there could be another key that comes along and changes the lock back the other way. Does that make sense? So you have to worry about this with competition. Um, there's a limited amount of keyholes of substrate. Okay. So how could you overcome this kind of inhibition? What you could do, right, is you could make more keyholes. So, you, so basically, what's exciting about this one? Um, she's going to have a question, and she's going to say either. I used this and it overcame a certain type of inhibition. What kind of inhibition was it? Was it allosteric or was it, you know, competitive or was it, you know, all these other words that have nothing to do with this? And it's going to be one of these two, right? Um, and what you're going to look at is with competitive inhibition, the one that I just up here, you're basically increasing the amount of substrate, okay? Which are your locks, okay? And when you do that, you increase the frequency, you're going to have. Um, a larger number of locks so you might have enough for all the keys. Okay, so that's just going to be the short end section. Uh, make sure you guys upload, um, excuse me, make sure that you guys look at the uploads that I have on Facebook, and that should be everything.